Hi, Ron Ewins here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this time lapse video, I use proportional dividers to prepare an initial drawing. I also talk about other methods of drawing and their advantages and disadvantages for pastel painters. OK, here we are with a clean sheet of pastel mat on the drawing board. Before we get started, I thought I would just mention how I stick my paper to the board. My backing board is a thin sheet of iron-based metal. You can buy these in DIY stores. Then I use small button neodymium magnets. These snap onto the board and hold the paper incredibly firmly. The reference photo I'm using is courtesy of Crokey Cafe. In Photoshop, I have divided it horizontally and vertically with straight lines. The diagonal line is just a mistake. I'm not very good in Photoshop. Proportional dividers aren't rocket science. I think you can buy them from any art suppliers, but I happen to make these myself from a child's construction kit. By selecting which hole to put the pivot screw in, you adjust the ratio of the distances measured by the narrow end and the wide end. Set the dividers up so that this ratio is the same as between the reference photo and the painting you want to draw. Now draw out the scaled up grid on your paper. Carefully take key measurements from the reference photo using the narrow end of the proportional dividers and then transfer them onto the painting using the wide end of the proportional dividers. I'm using vine charcoal to make the marks. I happen to have shown you a key measurement that fell onto the cross and that made it rather easy. For the points that lie uh, in the middle, away from the lines of the cross, you have to measure a down or up measurement and a horizontal measurement from either the left hand edge or the cross. You can use whatever's convenient. You can plot as many points as you feel comfortable with. If you're a confident drawer, you can probably get away with relatively few points. I'm not very confident, so I've, I've put quite a lot of points on here. Now you can join the dots. This is where you do get quite a bit of drawing practice because you have to take care to get the curves correct. Study the reference photo carefully before you draw each line and make sure that you've got the line correctly curved. It's probably best to keep checking and rechecking with the proportional dividers the locations of any absolutely critical parts like for example the eye and the corners of the mouth. The nostrils are also very important. From this point forward, I started to put some shading in. I only really did this because I wanted to get um, an Instagram post out of it. And that without some shading, it looked a bit hollow. But actually, if you're going to do a pastel painting, I don't think it's worth shading. You're, you're only trying to find the nuances of light and dark that you're going to have to find with pastel anyway. So you might as well work with pastel from this point onwards and abandon the, the, the vine charcoal. Still, it doesn't, it's, it, it isn't a major problem. I did feel that when I'd got the shaded picture uh, finished, I sprayed it with fixative and I found that rather made the pastels more difficult to get on. So definitely if I do this again, I won't 
produce this style of charcoal drawing. Now I decided to fill in the background. It's not quite so important in this case where I'm putting a light background onto a light paper. But it would be important if I was working with a dark paper. If you paint skin tones against the dark background and then change the background to light, you tend to find that the skin tones come out far too dark. While this is running, I thought I might take the chance to talk about my thoughts on ways to get the initial drawing done. I should perhaps say up front that I'm a painter of mainly figurative pastels, so my te techniques are quite specific to these. Painters in wet media and landscape painters have different issues to resolve. About 20 years ago, I went to a life portrait class for a few weeks. The results were truly awful, as they were for many of the other beginners on the course. The trouble was there was just too much to learn and it led to over overload. Quite a few people gave up. So when I decided to try painting again, about three or four years ago, I decided to split the problem into two parts, the drawing and the painting. If you're going to make a painting, drawing is mainly about getting things in the right place on the paper or canvas. Of course, if the final product is to be a drawing, there will be much more to it than that because it will need to incorporate light and shade to give it solidity and form and textures to give it realism. But if the product is to be a painting, then these will come later. So to start with, it's enough to know where to put things. For some forms of painting, the drawing is not actually very important at all. If you want to paint a landscape with a distant mountain and a lake in the foreground with a few trees, then the exact shapes are really not important. As long as they are good enough so that the viewer's brain does not signal that something is off, just a few sketchy lines will do. But for many paintings, if you want any form of realism at all, and maybe you don't, which is absolutely fine, the drawing becomes very important. A detailed still life probably needs a good drawing because the shapes and their interactions are vital. And if you want to paint reasonably realistic figurative work, and especially portraits, then accuracy is a fundamental requirement. Fortunately, there is nothing to stop you developing your painting skills, even if you are not confident with drawing. There are lots of ways open to you to get those important line downs, but they each come with different advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with the easiest and most accurate method, and that is tracing. Using, using special artists wax free tracing papers, you can trace the important features of your refer in reference image straight onto your paper or canvas. Of course, you have to enlarge your photo and print it at an appropriate size which is easy if you have access to a computer and a printer. But after that, it's simple. Another advantage of this method becomes clear as you paint, because after you paint over the trace lines, things like noses and eyes often begin to drift as you keep trying to get them right. If you keep the print of your reference in place folded up above the painting, you can just lower it and check and lightly retrace the feature which has drifted. The main advantage though is that you can get really quite nice results as you develop your painting skills. And in doing the painting, you'll be gradually developing drawing skills anyway. 
you will be practicing good observation because even after tracing, there are still drawing types of decisions to be made. You can't trace every nuance. Getting good results early is going to make it less likely that you just give up in despair. The main disadvantages are that you could be developing your drawing faster and tracing does rather encourage you to slavishly follow the reference when in fact it's not really necessary. Another widely used method is squaring up. This is where you draw a grid on your reference photo and the same grid on your drawing paper. If you want to scale it up, you just make the grid on the paper larger than the one on the photo. Then you copy the key lines by copying where they fall on the grid. You can make the mesh of the grid as small as you like if you want it to be accurate. Personally, I've always taken the view that if you're going to go to all that trouble, you might just as well have traced it. It's so much easier. But of course, that assumes you have access to a printer. Of course, the ultimate goal is to be so good at drawing that you can do it by eye straight onto the paper. There are lots of YouTube videos showing oil painters doing this, starting out with a huge brush for the big forms and gradually overpainting with more and more detail until the final painting appears. I love watching them do this. But for us pastel painters, it is very difficult because although we can lay quite a bit, the paper is eventually going to run, run out of tooth. And when this happens, ready or not, it's finito. Until your drawing is so good that you can break the tooth barrier, I would recommend using some form of measurement, even if it is only on a very few key points, say the centre of each iris, the corners of the mouth, the tip of the nose, if that has a highlight. See how few you can get away with. Using proportional dividers, you can keep subsequent accuracy in check using the key points to measure from. I hope some of this has been useful. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. The main thing is to just enjoy your painting and that's what I do. See you soon.